that I knew that my family would never let me have relationships, let alone be in a relationship with someone who was trans. Worked out seven years later and we're planning our wedding, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it worked out for the best. Wedding planning is a stress. It's real. Did I just kick you? You did. Sorry. That's all right. I've got another hand. <laughs> right. Let me just get our notes. Why out. is there already so much paper involved? We could get a helicopter. No. No. <laughs> oh God. And we need to get a dress. You well, need to I get need a dress. <laughs> we first met in college, and apparently, I was rude. You were. I said hi to you and you blanked me and you're too busy with your own friends. This has been something we've agreed to disagree on for the past <laughs> seven years. What do we start looking at? Okay. What do you want to do? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Can't be that bored of it already. No, I'm just tired. Also probably worth mentioning at this point that Jamie was pre-Jamie. Pre-Jamie. He hadn't transitioned yet. No, so. no. Looking back, I genuinely just thought I was one of the boys. Then uh, puberty happened and that's when everything just fell apart a bit and was very dramatic and I wasn't happy. I'd never heard of trans people, I'd, I'd never seen a trans person knowingly and there was this documentary about a young trans guy who's the same age as me at the time and it just like flicked a switch and I was like oh my god that that explains how I've been feeling and it was like from that moment like I just knew it was right. The first person I came out to was my mum, I think six-ish months after I'd like figured things out myself. And then it was a couple months later that I told all my friends. Should we give them fresh? Yeah, sure. Because some of this has come from the floor. I told Shabba at like my parents' shed, like we used to play music in the back shed. Oh, that sounds so cringe, yeah. Jamie. Oh yeah. my God. I found some, we had them in the bag. She was probably one of the people I was like most scared to tell because I knew your family's opinion but I didn't know yours so I wasn't sure how open Shabba was going to be to it. Um, but you were great, like you were really good. Shabba was the first person who like got my name and pronouns down and never made a mistake from that day that I told you. You literally never messed up once. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> We had a, obviously a discussion about whether we could still be friends because my mum's family had a very strict rule that I was not to make friends with any guys and in my defence I didn't actively do that, like I, I wasn't to know <laughs> that my best friend was, you know, identified as male, um, so yeah, sorry, that's all right. No, he's just staring at me like I'm a weirdo. So my family background's a little bit different, I would say. When I was quite young, my mum and dad separated. My dad married a, a white lady and lives like quite a Western lifestyle. My mum remarried uh, to a very Asian guy and lives a very Asian lifestyle. They're very strict. They also identify as Muslim. So there's a lot of religious sort of like rules and traditions to follow too. It was really weird growing up because I had the two polar opposite dynamics. Are you okay? Right, what wrapping paper? Do you have the flamingo one? No. When I came out as trans and like Shaba accepting it completely, our friendship dy dynamic did change. You don't ask me that, just make a decision yourself. <laughs> I've chosen unicorns. Thank you. Yeah, I had fancied Shaba for a while before. I told her, I think I kind of always had a little thing, like from when I first met her. I had a feeling like there was something going on where we were a bit more than friends, but I had no idea if it was actually real or if I was just imagining it because I wanted it to be happening. Don't judge me, stop watching. Well, it was a difficult one. Like, I did genuinely love you as a friend, you know, like we'd, we'd spent so much time together and I think you were right. There were a few things that we had done. I mean, it was so silly to the point where before you'd even come out, I'd be like, ah, oh, if only you were a guy, like, I'd marry you straight away, you know, like, these yeah. jokey things, because we just got on so well. And friends well. saying, oh, you're like an old married couple. Yeah, yeah, all the time. So this is for our friend Katie, she turned 25 yesterday, and she's coming over today, so a present. It's, it's half of her presents, the other one didn't arrive in time. Typical postage, you know. 
I've known Katie for about eight years, a little bit over eight years. We went to college together because we made friends at the same time. Cobb was actually the one so, that introduced yeah. us. We didn't tell our friends straight away. We kept the entire relationship quite secret, except from our like closest friend, Katie, Just like Katie. we told her yeah. and she was adorable. She was properly like, oh my God, yeah, you guys are together. That's her now. Wow. Sorry. That's like, it's like I let her in, is it? Sorry. Hi, you're right. <gasps> it's been ages. Hello. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he was trans. I knew he wasn't into men at the time and that was about it. And then it wasn't until probably a good year or so later that you then just went, you just said, oh yeah, like I'm trans. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think everyone initially found it difficult like switching pronouns, didn't they? Pronouns are weird, yeah. Pretty much everybody. But, and then you just kind of get used to it. And then just, Jamie was a good choice. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> you do suit Jamie. Aww. In the first couple of years of our relationship, we kept it quiet for a few months. Jamie sent me a really soppy New Year's text. It was, it was sweet. My mum had my phone and she saw the message and all hell broke loose. She was just like, my daughter's a lesbian and just sort of told my whole family who were very unimpressed. It was quite difficult because after that point, uh, there was just constant pressure to break up with Jamie when they realised that that wasn't going to happen. Um, they sort of provided me with an ultimatum of like, well, you either see your family or you carry on living this very shameful lifestyle. I got to a point where I was kind of disowned for a little while and I left the house and because I had nowhere to go. Your family very kindly took me in. <laughs> I don't hold it against her. No. I'm glad she's moved on from it. Coming in. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Come on you first. I suppose in the early days with Shabba's family, we didn't have a, 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 what I would call a relationship. I, you know, obviously they were they had problems with Jamie and Shabba's relationship. I think we uh, certainly have a very good relationship with her mum now. It was about four years, I think, before my mum even contemplated talking to me about Jamie. Although it was really bad, I do completely understand that she was just doing what she was brought up to do. First thing I think, if I say it now, is that Jamie and Shabba are a real strong team. They're very supportive of each other. They do seem very much in love. Since the engagement party though, and your bottom yeah. surgery. But it's been, it's really been in the last year and a half that things have like just accelerated so much and it's felt a lot more natural, very friendly, genuine friendliness, genuine like between people. It's fantastic. So we're planning on actually getting married next year. It's a dream come true though, like yeah. I never thought we'd be at the place that we are. For the first few years of our relationship, all we did was fight against people who are saying, no, you mm. can't be doing this. It's really important, for me at least, to show actually it can and it's bloody cool. Chuck, because we don't get anyway. <laughs> <laughs>